What more do we know about uh, how the virus is spreading across Libya at this stage? Well, the number of confirmed cases in Libya is still relatively low compared to neighboring countries, so several dozen confirmed cases. That's lower than Tunisia, Egypt, and Algeria, but it is growing in Libya. It's, it's definitely gone up over the course of this month. Uh, the World Health Organization says that it's confident in the testing that's being done in Tripoli. Uh, it says that those medical professionals are very well qualified to be doing those tests. But the big question really is what happens outside Tripoli? How do you do nationwide testing in a country uh, that it has two rival administrations and also a patchwork of armed groups controlling different bits of territory. It's obviously very difficult. So what the uh, national unity government is doing, the, the internationally recognized government, is to uh, impose this lockdown as of today, this Friday. Uh, it's trying to do what it can do in the territory that it controls. Uh, and that means uh, basically uh, locking down shops and various activities during the day. From now on, uh, Libyans in those areas will have to do their food shopping first thing in the morning because shops will be closed from mid-morning. Uh, meanwhile, in the east, where the rebels have their power base, there's a slightly different situation. Uh, they've had a nighttime curfew. That's different from a daytime lockdown. So you can see that there's a real patchwork of measures in different parts of Libya because of the very messy political situation overall. Now, Amin, can you talk us through the most vulnerable groups in the Libyan population, presumably like elsewhere, those with underlying health issues, the elderly? What else do we have? Well, the, the, the problem is that the healthcare system has been battered by many years of conflict now. It's a similar situation in that sense to Yemen and Syria. We've been talking about those countries as well in the context of COVID-19. So obviously, with poor infrastructure, everybody is at risk. And particularly those with underlying health conditions, as you mentioned. Uh, but also two particular groups have been mentioned by the United Nations as being very vulnerable. That is internally displaced people. Uh, that's Libyans who've been forced out of their homes in nearly nine years of conflict, uh, but who are still inside Libya. And migrants who've come from elsewhere through the various routes from African countries. Naturally, the smugglers have for years now been exploiting the chaos to try to get those migrants uh, from Libya and onwards towards Europe. Uh, and the UN has sounded the alarm, particularly about uh, the official detention centers in Libya, where many migrants are being held, uh, decrying the unsanitary conditions there. But also the UN has been talking about the so-called private prisons where migrants are being held. These private prisons are being run by various traffickers and extortionists, and they are extremely crowded and unsanitary as well. So the UN has been particularly concerned, as have the World Health Organization and advocacy groups about COVID getting into uh, those very overcrowded conditions.